Hey, Stephanie. Hey, uh, ACP. Um, if either of you want to come up and chat, that's great. Um, honestly, I'm just bored and thought, oh, let's just get a space going and see if we can get any main event updates. How you doing, ACP? <laughs> I'm, I'm bored too, Sherry. Oh, man. <laughs> I got to tell you. I love it. What have you been doing lately? I haven't oh, talked to you. I work so much. Um, it's it's uh, basically, let me see. Work nine to five, and then I'll probably grab like a couple extra hours at night, um, depending on meetings the next day. Then the rest of the time with my five-year-old and wife, and then we've been doing a gym uh, about four or five days a week in between all that. So pretty busy. You know, that thing called life is a busy one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, you know, I have a million things I could be doing right now. And I'm like, why am I bored? But here I am. <laughs> oh, well, what can I say? Um, sometimes yeah. you just want to not do those, uh, you know, ho-hum jobs you got around the house, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm late, but I just found out Ivy's still in, which is really cool. That's is, very is, cool. Is he on a um, uh, poker go? Oh, I don't know if he's on the featured table or not. Yeah, I haven't even turned it on. Honestly, I'm just kind of bored with everything right now. Like you could probably put the most amazing movie on right now, and I would just look at it and go, "I'm bored." <laughs> like nothing is tickling my fancy right now. You're having a board day. I am, Murph. How are you, bud? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm probably the opposite of the board. I'm way overstimulated. <laughs> uh, well, I know you are, and guess what? That's okay. You're on vacation. Oh, yeah. That's the first time I've thought of that word for a while now, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you got any updates for us? Uh, we've got the chirp. It's, uh, it's half a mil, 490 or so. Lines okay. are coming back to 612. Uh, Jim Reed got some updates for hot news off the press from him. Uh, he's down to 19,000. Uh, oh. He uh, managed to step over that and then step over that again and then step over that again as the blinds sort of like just kept creeping up. He just would get that double and uh, he's now up to half a mil. So, uh, yeah, I think he's probably out of that 30 big blind range, that 25, 20 to 30 big blind range that he's been job, nursing Jim. so well. Yeah. He's really been, uh, sounded like he was nursing, nursing that nearly, it feels like, for the whole three days, and uh, or three and a half days now. And, yeah, so now he's probably, I'd say, like half a mil, depending on what hands happen between now and the end of the day, of course, there's a long time to go. But, but uh, the way that he's been tracking a uh, half mil stack would be great for him because it came into this one with 250. The one before that might have been 120 and the other one might have been 100 or so. So, uh, yeah, he's really just been able to nurse it through the through all the levels, just watching everyone play. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's doing really well. Good job, Jim. Yeah. That's excellent. And uh, the, he's been going to the, the poker.org lounge. Was a really quiet spot to uh, hang out. So right. I know he's been going there in the mornings and they keep extending the days that they're going to be open. They were only going to be open July 1 to 5. Right. And yep. uh, then they extended it to the 7th. Then they extended it to the 10th, which is today. Uh, they can't stay any longer. So I don't know what Jim's going to do for his uh, morning morning breakfast uh, sort of chilled place. He needs something like that. So I'm going to have to find a bit of a quieter spot for him for breakfast, I think. And if what about Cody? Have you seen him lately? Uh, yeah, well, past Cody uh, just before the last break. Um, he was being interviewed, so I, I wasn't going to do uh, And I was also walking the other way. So uh, he's still in, uh, which is nice. Nicky P still in. Saw him. Uh, ACP saying Ivy's still in. That's good. You guys have probably, I haven't been able to get onto uh, Poker News or the uh, WSOP update sites. So you guys probably know, know more about the notables and things, and uh, and it's really hard to get, like I said earlier, to get stack sizes from 
anyone because the, the rail is so far off. So, right um, on. I, I did notice Chirp was a, a few tables closer this time, so I might uh, might be able to go in and um, catch him to see how he's uh, stacked, what his table looks like. So I might do that soon. Well, I can tell you, let me pull up um, the list of, I've just kind of been perusing the list that keep posting. And um, give me one second to pull it up. I know that Harrington, John Harrington, was still in it. Yep, yep, I did say that name. Uh, so I guess what you'd probably be looking for on the, the update sites are all the, the busted ones because they won't be able to keep up with the 900 odd that are there, but they can keep up with the notables of bust. So, yeah, like I, I'm not sure if Maria Ho's still in. Uh, she or, was still in. Nice, nice. I love to see that. Um, and yes. I'm yeah. just so worried about these updates because there's been such misinformation on this website that every time I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, is that correct or is it? It's a little uh, nerve wracking. Yeah, and the um, I've noticed the WSOP numbers as well as it starts getting lower. Yeah. Um, they can change. Sometimes here they'll change by 10, 10 or 15. Earlier this morning was like 30. Um, and then 6 and then 3 and then back to 6. So they're, they're starting to slow down on um, shutting down the tables. But so they, they have moved everyone into a bigger chunk. Well, they just moved the, the side of the room into more in the middle. Uh, so it's definitely uh, coming down in size. So they listed in the orange counts about 15, 20 minutes ago. So like Tony Dunst is still in with 1.8 million. Nice. Your, your fellow countryman, Daniel Hatcham has 1.3 million. Oh, awesome. Natasha That's... Mercier has 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million. Um, Christopher Frank has 795,000. Brian Hastings has 450,000. Um, I'm trying to scroll down to see if I can't find any more lists um, that are recent anyway. At 552, so that would have been uh, what? Uh, 552 local time. Um, so, yeah. Because I'm on the like East that. Coast, so I have to think about it for a minute. But uh, Matt Stout had 1.89 uh, million. I think he went down a little bit to 1.6 now. Uh, but Kristen Foxen's up at 950. Brian cool. Rast at 740,000. On this one, it says Nikki Palmer had 695,000. Yeah. Um, Ashley Davison has 250,000. And of course, you know, even if it's only a half an hour or 40 minutes ago, those chip stacks can be way different now, right? So exactly, exactly. That's the uh. That's an issue with, with sweating there. Uh, yeah, it's so hard. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot to keep up with because there's still so many left. Yeah. And then when, when people criticize the, uh, the poker news journalists or any any journalists that are trying to cover this sort of an event, it's just, just uh, near impossible. You can't. You can only and it's really unfair, isn't it? Yeah, you can only get... You'd have to have literally table counters on every, like for every chip there was a weight uh, was somehow uh, like a, is it RGI cards, and it'd have to all be, maybe one day 10, 20 years down the track, we will all be watching the main event on TV with, uh, virtually with whole cards maybe on delay with whole cards, but chip counts and uh, little ticker tapes going across the screen to updating you on all the other tables you know? Right, so and I great. wonder if they could not do like an iPad and every time a dealer sits down like the table has like an iPad, and every time there's a dealer change, the dealer just goes through the uh, by seat um, and puts in their chip counts. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be a nice way to do it. Just while he's waiting for the action, um, they could right. do that. You know, and it only take you know even if it takes two minutes. So what? 
everybody's going to stop for two minutes when their dealer changes and have that update. Um, and maybe it's not every dealer change. Maybe it's every, I don't know, every other. Oh, right. Do it during the break when the day is the table yeah. anyway. Doing yeah. nothing. Yeah. And yeah, some of these guys would need training definitely, like to uh, uh, watching them try and uh, award a chop pot. I think sometimes if they had to estimate or count some, some of these jack stacks, there would be a few errors, but that it would, all that information would have to come with the, the uh, thing behind it saying that there could be mistakes there. So don't, these, right. these are estimates. They're not exactly what every person has in their stack right down to the right. last thousand. You know, we don't need that much accuracy. We just want sort of something roughly. I think it could be easily done because the dealers, like at a regular casino poker room, they have those little computers that they clock the patrons in on, you know, so it could be the same type of program. And, you know, they already have the seat assignments made. The only time it would, you know, goof up, they would have to um, make adjustments when they move a player from one table to a next. Right. So uh, but that's still easily doable. Why not have a each player when they get their seat card for the day? It's a scannable seat card. So when you go to that next table, they just scan it, and now you know who's there. I don't know. I I think yeah. it's not that big of a problem to solve personally. But again, I have big dreams. Yeah. The uh, the issue the only issue I see with it is scale, and that's to to be able to do that on a few tables. Yes, and then ten tables. Yes, fifty tables. Yeah, and then like fifteen hundred tables. Exactly. Right. This event's just so huge. It's so well. Yeah. And is the cost of that like? Is it really that important? I don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's got to be some sort of. A, well, I guess that's when you call advertising and say, "Yeah, throw us fifty million dollars for advertising it for two months." Right. And. Uh, Oh, fifty million dollars. Yeah, we can do that for fifty million dollars. Yeah. So, uh, well, and honestly, maybe it should be something Poker uh, Poker Atlas does, right? And they just charge for a subscription of, you know, if you want to be, you know, have that live feed of the numbers. It for the summer, it's maybe thirty dollars for the whole summer, and then they come with a crew and they go table by table, and you know. I don't know. I, I think that it could be doable. I just don't know if it's cost effective. But yeah. anyway, that's my two cents for what it's yeah. worth. All right, I brought Stephanie up. What's up, my friend? Hey, Sherry. Um, do you happen to know how many people are still in the oh, event? Let me look. Let me see what they say on the site. I, and I'm not going to say it's... Uh, let's see. On the site right now, it says 942. Okay, yeah, because Rampage went out at actually at 942 um, about 33 minutes ago. So I'm assuming we're probably at like the 925 mark. Probably. Yeah. I'll get you a more accurate one in about five minutes, Stephanie. I'll, I'll, um, I'll wander on in. Perfect. Thank you, Merv. You're the best. Perfect. I think the next ladder is eight fifty. Uh or eight eight fifty, eight sixty. So if it's only if you're saying nine twenty five, I'm gonna say it's it's probably closer to nine ten or something. Uh I've seen that token news tracker be usually thirty, twenty twenty to thirty it seems to be behind. Uh and I think I've noticed that they might actually time their updates with big break times. Uh so you know, they'll be accurate for a certain period uh, through the break and then after the break, but then for the next couple of hours, they can be a bit slow. So, yeah, because yeah, they're paying out people. So they got to pay them out, swipe them, you know, their card, blah, blah, blah. It's not a fast process. Yeah, the queue for getting caches in the uh, Colossus was absolutely ridiculous. So. Uh, um, at the rate people were going out, uh, they couldn't keep up with the line. And there was like 40, 50 people there. So, um, and Jean, I'm just uh, at the Essentials, just outside the uh, first entrance to the shoe. 
right one just back a little bit, but I'll keep an eye out for you. Awesome. Oh, he's dropped off. Okay, yeah, Gene, Gene's somewhere here. Um, shout out to Gene. He's going to possibly jump into something tonight. Turbo's in a uh, daily deep stack. He had yeah, how's he doing? Uh, yeah, he had about 70, 80 K. Uh, let me see. Uh, he had uh, yeah, 77 K at the end of late red and there was 280 out of 540 left. So he's got through nearly half the, uh, half the field. Awesome. Yeah. Hello. Can anyone hear me? Hey, hey Gene. here's Gene. Uh, it's gonna have to something. I was looking for Merv. Uh, <laughs> we I might have found him. I'll get off the mic so it's well, we can stay on and uh, jump the uh, echo screw. All right, you guys figure out a place to meet. I see Robin just popped in. I hate I missed you in Vegas, Robin. Next go round, my friend. I love it. So Gene and Merv are going to meet in real life. So that's fun. I love when people get to meet each other, especially, you know, we've been talking with each other for some of us over a year now, you know, like I got to meet Merv last week and, you know, he and I go way back in the spaces. He was in that space when I was trying to wake up Eden, when Eden fell asleep for the first time um, in his space. So it was so much fun meeting him in person. Love it. Does that ever blow your mind, Sherry, that we're all connected in a way, we're all over the globe, and we can come together in a really big way? Absolutely. Um, and it's been, you know, like, it's also been a little mind boggling. You know, I had somebody run up to me at the ladies event at the nugget, gave me a big hug and, you know, and she was from Australia and she was thanking me for our morning show. And, you know, you just, you think, you know, okay, people are listening and conversing with us and, but you don't really realize the extent of it until you, you meet some of them in person and, and you're like, wow, you know, that's really reaching somebody's soul or somebody's heart or somebody's mind or somebody's pocketbook or whatever it is. And it's very cool. Very cool indeed. Oh, Rob, and I'm sorry to hear that news. Um, I will say a prayer for your mom and we will catch up in the future. Don't you worry about that. Now, I see Bathwater for Buy-In says, saw you live, thought it was time for my regular morning bubble bath. Now I'm lost. Okay, who are you talking? <laughs> who are you saying that to? Uh, you must have saw Merv live and thought it was time for your regular morning bubble bath. Now I'm lost. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but go ahead. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't take much to humor me these days. Oh, that's funny. Love it. Is that, is that still a play on um, Ash's Dirty Bath Water story? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. It's so funny. I don't know why. It just tickles my funny bone. I think it was just the whole timing of it and within like Less than five minutes, the troll count was created, right? And, oh, that's what makes it fun. Stephanie, where are you now? Are you going to drive back or fly back to Vegas and drive to Houston with Bobby? Or what's going on? Um, Bobby's been a little bit AWOL since he uh, he busted that tournament the other day. I'm kind of giving him some space. Um, not the best end to his summer Bummer. of poker. Yeah. That's a bummer. So if I help him, um, if I help him move, it'll likely be after my trip. Um, I'm going to be in Nashville the 18th through the 24th. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. 
Well, hopefully he's just uh, chilling and packing and getting ready for his move and, and getting excited about that. No crying over spilt milk. You just learn from it and keep on trucking. Well, some of you need to tell him that because I think, um, I think he was shaken a little bit and, you know, variants are a real thing and you can play perfect and still not win. And I trying to get him to understand that. But um, also, did you all see uh, the update that uh, Kessler posted? No, enlighten us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so he wrote that he's faring well thus far in the 10K uh, 8G championship, probably top 10 in chips on the second break. And he just posted that about 15 minutes ago. Well, that is awesome. Let's go, Alan Kessler. Love that. Let's go. It's about time he gets a bracelet. Come on, Kessler. Of all the people grinding on a daily basis, it's about time he wins one. Got to will it. Put it out into the universe, as they say. That would make me so happy if he did. Yeah, I wonder if it'll make him happy. Um, you know what? He would definitely find something to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's too big. It's too little. It's, you know, <laughs> the bracelet that is. Go ahead, Larry. Welcome. Hey, so... Didn't D-Nex put out a, a tweet a couple weeks back with predictions about what was going to happen during the series? And he's hit he's hit on a couple of them now, right? And I think one of them is Kessler wins a bracelet, too, is one of them. That would be amazing if they predicted that. <laughs> that would be awesome. I did not see those. Um, yeah, he predicted Chance Corinth was going to win one. And I'll, I'll try to find the tweet and I'll put, I'll send it to you and you can check it That'll out. That'll be great. I love that. Love that. And uh, I'm happy for Chance for sure. He's such a great guy. Um, of course, we talked about it this morning. I don't think player of the year points should be connected to a flip and go, but it's my personal opinion. But um, happy he won that bracelet for sure. He's another nice guy grinding it out. Nice guy. Where are we with the player of the year points? Did anybody look at that today? Let's see what that looks like. Here, I'm going to pull it up and see. You know, the thing about it, um, there's still tournaments left, you know, as well as online tournaments. Um, still the same three people, Seaver, Osmus, and uh, Big Cooney. First, second, and third still. So, um, yep. I guess it looks about the same. Of course, I didn't have it memorized, but I do remember those were the top three. Interesting. I, I just realized, yeah, we have the 25K Fantasy, the fantasy League. Oh, yeah. Looking yeah. At, look at my roster now, I actually... I might have a sweat in here for the main event. Who's on your team that you're sweating? I got to double check. I'm going to, I don't want to jinx it. I'll, I'll let you know. If he's still <laughs> in. He, was, he was in last night, but I haven't refreshed today. Listen, my team is sucking so bad and I have so many amazing players on my team. I'm like, how am I at the bottom of the list right now with all these amazing players on my fantasy league team? I, I just don't understand. Just goes to show you. And of course, I have a piece of two different teams in, you know, beside our Spaces Fantasy uh, League. I bought a piece of the Team Lucky and I bought a piece of, um, what was it? Um, what is No Gamble, No Future? Is that what the hell it's called on Poker Go? Their team, Jeff Platt's team. And they're both sucking. I'm like, really, right now? <laughs> the three teams, no good, huh? Yeah, terrible. 
What's your team on the 25K? Uh, the coffee breakers. In your pool. Okay. Okay, yeah, five a week. Yeah. So uh, pull up, if you don't mind, pull up my roster and read the names <laughs> oh on my, my damn God. roster. Do you have Helmet, Aria, Harder, Ink. That's unbelievable. Yeah. How are my down in the bottom of the list? ODB of- Baker. Yeah. Yeah. I have <laughs> Phil Helmut with on my damn team. And we are sucking. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a <laughs> hell of a team to get in just a luck of a draw. Right? <laughs> Didn't RK finish in second in something yesterday? Uh, who's that, honey? Did I hear? Okay. Stay, uh, Steph, you cut out. Say that again, please. Yes, ma'am. You have Josh Ari in yeah. your team? Didn't he finish second in something yeah, that yesterday? Yeah, mixed. game mixed. But that shows you how bad we are that that didn't even help my team. <laughs> second place finish <laughs> didn't even help my team. Wow. We suck. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, I really thought with, uh, with Dean Eggs winning another bracelet and Phil Ivey winning another bracelet that we would have the trifecta with Phil Helmuth, like, winning something as right. well. But I guess not. Not many more events left. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Interesting. ACP, what team do you have? I, what is it? The um, Sternheimer, is it called? Yeah, Sternheimer. Weren't you guys at the top three, though? <laughs> yeah, number two. And yeah. the guy I was thinking of is Christopher Vich. And, yeah, he's still in the main event. Okay. He's is my about... father's team still in first place? Damn it. Yeah, it's the Dinkers, right? The Dinkers. Yeah. The dink him on his head. And who's <laughs> the third place team? Uh, dink him on his <laughs> the Team Baker. Oh, my God, Team Baker. <laughs> oh, well, what could I say? Um. Yeah, it's coming down to the wire on that. Somebody's going to be the lucky recipient of $190 uh, for that Fantasy League win. Is it first place only? Yep. Winner <laughs> takes off. Uh, I'll take, uh, if it's second place, money back. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, you know, next, I'm going to think about that for next year, how, um, how we may do it a little differently. Um, unless software or AC, uh, ASG comes up with a software to uh, automatically um, do the points, there's no way I'm doing drafting teams because there's no way in hell I'm going to be trying to keep up with the points for all the different members on 19 different teams. So y'all can forget that. Unless one of them come up with a software that'll do it automatically, then I'm in. Yeah, I, I, I actually like the way you did it. It was kind of fun. I like the the blind draw. That was cool. Yeah, just kind of a no-brainer, right? And just kind of follow along the teams. And, yeah, I don't know. I just well, thought it would be fun. To be honest, um, I thought it was going to be a draft. So <laughs> I was going to message you, can I auto-draft? <laughs> Because <laughs> it was uh, – you put out like you were doing the uh, – the draw right. like 1 p.m. or something the draft and that day it was like i don't know what time it was but it was right. i was mid-meeting and i'm like oh man i i literally was like i cannot get out of this i thought it was gonna be like a fantasy football style or something <laughs> like that so then when i saw you and in, in camera pulling from head i was like okay this worked out <laughs> yeah dude i don't know enough about uh you know, fantasy league stuff. Like I don't play them. I just know basically what they're like and do or whatever. But um, yeah. And like I said, there's no way, you know, I'm a volunteer here. There's no way I'm, I'm putting the time and effort into manually checking and, and, uh, and keeping track of, you know, points gathered by, you know, 19 teams full of people. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> I'm out. I, I'm with you. I, I I have no desire to ever be a commissioner of any league of any anywhere. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. <laughs> and we all know that if you do anything good in the spaces, you know, you're going to get slammed for it. So there's that. 
Uh, poor Hex and his, yeah, he got killed with that stuff. No so, good deed goes unpunished in the spaces. I mean, no, just, that's for sure. That, you know? that, that saying didn't have as much meaning as it does in the last year of spaces. Yeah. Than I mean, it just ever, think in about my it. Entire adult life. <laughs> and just think about it from Ruben getting slammed because he wanted to pay, he volunteered to pay off the, was it the Fantasy League money or something? And people slammed him so much he rescinded the offer. I mean, I've taken abuse because of successful meetup games. You know, Fats has taken abuse for putting up the money for, you know, the to uh, honor his league commitment. And he, you know, was going to pay his, his league out himself because AP uh, left with the money, so to speak. I mean... No good deed goes unpunished around here. That's for damn sure. Hex gets raked over the coals for running his league. I mean, come on. We shoot our own foot off around here. Most insane thing I've ever witnessed. That's for sure. Okay, you still got Ari Angle in for sure. Yay, me! <laughs> I don't know if it'll do any good though. Will he, you know, he, I think I need what 800 points to get to at least the top three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there uh, you go. That's one more person to add to your, your uh, WSOP list of updates. Thank you. I like that guy. He's such a delight to uh, chat with. I'll tell you. So impressive. So impressive. Oh, did you did you meet him? Um, we interviewed him. Oh uh, gosh. I yeah. think I know that. Yeah, we interviewed him years. back in the fall. Um, of course you can re re uh play it on my YouTube channel. Sherry Plisco to ninety two twelve. Um but he's just such a you know, he's just a kind of a grounded, um, you know, just a regular guy. He's not full of himself. He's not egotistical. At least I don't get that vibe from him. Um, very down to earth. Um, just a pleasure to talk with, chat with, you know. And I think he he gave such a good bird's eye view of the poker world and how he approaches it. Very impressive. Yeah, I, for some reason, I thought I'd been to pretty much all of them. I don't remember, but uh, I see he's from Canada, so that explains about 80% of what you said. Right. And I, I quote, semi-quote or paraphrase, whatever you want to say, uh, one thing that has stuck out in my mind from that interview is um, him staying within a certain price range of poker tournaments. Because, you know, paraphrasing again, he's successful at that level, at those levels. So why change it? You know, like he, I don't remember what the buy-ins were, but say they're like $500 to $1,500 tournaments. And he just stays within those price ranges because he's very successful. And why change something you're successful at? So I thought those were very wise words. Did he did he mention um, anything about it helping him focus more as versus lower stakes something like that? I think it was just more of a comfort uh, a comf being a comfortable at a comfortable level, um, and it was just his comfort zone, and he just you know because people have said why don't you play higher stakes you should move up for. You know, and uh, even just the natural, to me, the natural progression is when somebody binks something, they automatically think, oh, I'm on a roll. I really should, you know, normally I pay play $1,000 buy-ins. Oh, I'm, I've just binked this. I should start playing $10,000 buy-ins or let's try a 25000 And they start, um, you know, playing these higher stake tournaments just because they can now afford to not necessarily that they're ready to. And so I thought he was, you know, spewing some very wise words on that topic. 
Wow, he's cash for nine million. Eight point seven. Wow. Yeah, and look at the buy-ins. Like he does play some bigger ones, but if you go through, I I forgot I counted. He has hundreds of entries. I think it was like four hundred and ninety entries on his Henda mob, and I actually counted them because I'd never seen that many entries on a Hendon mob, right? And um you know, just look at the buy-ins. There's a lot of like low level buy-ins, so to speak. And it's just his wheelhouse. And how are you going to argue success? Yeah, no, definitely stay where you're comfortable and happy with your game. Yeah, you're right. It seems like he, he's generally right around that 200 to 500 range. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, people are surprised because you said how many millions has he earned? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you see nine million, you're like, oh, he must have, he must have beat a, a high roller or something. Or right. Something like that. Yeah. But he stays, you know, where he's comfortable. And he's like, why would I change that? <laughs> I'm making lots of money. Why would I? And, you know, a lot of people don't think about it that way. Maybe they should. Maybe they wouldn't go broke after being in a big tournament. I don't know. Um, but I think they're very wise words. Something to think about for sure. I have to tell you, ACP... Donna was so excited. I happened to be on the phone with her on her birthday, or was it the day after? I don't remember when she got the message from your daughter. Oh, yeah. I, I, um, she was so happy excited. Birthday. That's right. I asked her to sing happy birthday to Donna. And, and I, I actually re listened to it a couple of times. She sounds so cute. <laughs> she, Donna was so excited. She was so excited. I just wanted to share that with you. I'm glad. Yeah, that's really sweet. Glad it made her smile. It was like, hey, awesome. can, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, go ahead, Murph. Uh, I just, uh, just got back into the room. Sorry to interrupt what, uh, what you guys are talking about. Uh, I'll just give you a, an exact number. Um, we are down to 838. Uh, about an hour left in the level. Uh, average stack is about 770, and they're currently playing 612. 612. Uh, yeah. I always forget that big blind anti one because we don't usually play it back home. So I just figure I can just leave that out. It's always going to be the, the same. Right. Yeah. Um but then at the same, Did you at meet the same Jean? time, I would usually not say, yeah, yeah, got to meet meet Jean and uh, uh, Mr. Joe was there, Moringo as well. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, yeah. I had a little touch up with them and uh, stroll back in here. Jim's, uh, I think I gave you the update where Jim was at about 500,000. Uh, Sweet. I'm not sure. Too much of the other ones. Uh, Chirp got down to 240. Um, then just played an absurd hand. Missed full double for one million with a bad run out, but for, he's still grinding away. Good for him. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll swing back from that pretty easy. So just looking at his table briefly. Uh, Good job. Mm. It's like, I was about to say there's three or four of them that look like monsters. And then uh, I have a look at Chirp as well. He looks, he, I reckon he's at home with these monsters. So uh, they're, uh, I could say it's one of the more serious tables, let's put it that way. Um, a few of the tables are a little bit talkative, and, but not his day for now. It's uh, uh, about eight blank stairs. Uh, yeah, but that's what you got to do when you 
day four. Right. Minutes, so. And let's not forget, Chirp was telling us this morning that a guy um, sucked out runner runner for uh, a flush, and Chirp almost got a rail because Chirp was chirping at him after the hand. Right. Uh, it was right before dinner break last night, or break. I think it was dinner break. Um, and so Chirp. <laughs> Or maybe it was right before bedtime. I don't know, bagging. But anyway, um, Chirp was talking about it this morning, saying, you know, this guy better not, basically, better not even blink the wrong way at him. So I'm sure that table's quiet because uh, there's a little bit of tension going on. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and he, he had to adjust pretty quickly this morning, too, from knowing your table draw to... Arrive, arriving at the table and finding out they've moved you and uh, instead of being the, the biggest stack on the table you're now the smallest uh, oh, oh smaller. I didn't know he got moved yeah yeah, yeah everything I, I would suggest that um, you know everything is done today so far that's a testament to being able to change and adapt because he had a he had a pretty good plan going in uh, knowing that he had everyone covered with a, an hour or so's play on the bubble Um uh, yeah, I think he'd been looking pretty pretty clear that that was going to be a good line to take and then to find yourself in the opposite one. And I think he's, he has been moved once or twice, or at least once. So uh, I don't know if he got onto a new table that was even, even more crushes, but uh, yeah. It's really hard to see anyone else there either. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think it's... Yeah, good on him for being able to adjust on the fly like that. Absolutely. Um, Especially when you already have your, uh, you know, game plan in mind because you think you know your opponents. Mm. Yep, yeah, exactly. Good for him. Uh, go, chirp, go. So what are you going to do now, Merv? What, what's your plans? Um, I've got to, uh, I'm going to get Jim some dinner from the, uh, bazaar, which I'm, I'm assuming, oh, here we go, uh, let me just, get my chicken, mix bowl, mix bowl, what's the name, not spicy, not tzatziki, all right, I think that's what I'm about to do now, uh, is head down breaks in 50 minutes. Awesome. Sorry, guys. Uh, you probably don't uh, need to know the ins and outs of this. Jim's just texting me through his. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Order, so it's okay. Yeah. We don't mind you timing. thinking out loud for a minute. And it's good timing because it's simultaneously to when I was talking about it and you asked me, oh, what are we doing next? But, uh, yeah, getting Jim sorted. That's. For sure. Well, I know he appreciates that. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a, a top guy. And, uh, yeah, I wish wish all the best for him. Uh, I probably already said it's awesome seeing him here on day four, but uh, I've been saying it all day. So. Well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is awesome. Um, you know, there are certain people you can't be more happy for that they're on day four, and he's one of them. Yep, yep, hundred percent. So now I've just got to sort of the site of the uh, the place. I can, uh, yeah, the map's not showing up, so I don't know the exact place where he wants me to get it from. What's it called? Uh, uh, it's Istanbul Mediterranean, so it's actually a place where. I've I've eaten twice already, and that's rare over here for me to find a place that, <laughs> that I'll, I'm comfortable eating. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm glad he's chosen this place because I know exactly where it is. Oh, good. Uh, so I've just got to decipher the um, – I'm pretty sure I know this, the place, actually. Yeah. And, um, I actually took a snapshot of it to send him, so – a mix bowl, basically. 
uh, and for sauce house and white sauce. I don't remember the names of them. Not spicy and not tzatziki. That one I can't help you with. Yeah, I think it's, I don't know what the house sauce is, but um, the white sauce could be yogurt. That's what I had. All right. Awesome. Well, I know he's going to appreciate that meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I nearly uh, didn't want to ask him what he wanted uh, in case it was too soon before, like, you don't want to necessarily assume that this is what, you know, you're going to make it to the dinner break because uh, anything can happen. So, and it's also the same thing with the combination, right? And, and deciding whether do we book another room for another couple of nights. Uh, it's uh, a nice problem to have. Yeah. Right on. Uh, I'm lucky that I get to use, use these sort of uh, thought processes all the time. And just, Wait until you get enough information, and then you can actually make a decision. But then try to put too much into it you know, along the way in the decision making process. Otherwise, it'll, yeah, you'll feel bogged down in details. And if you do that, you can't enjoy uh, every other moment that you enjoy. So, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this walk out in the heat. I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, is it over like no in front of the horseshoe is in that little area of um, restaurants? I don't even know where you're going. Yeah, uh, you can just take the elevator up and go across. Oh, yeah. And then down the lift and you're in this uh, food bazaar shopping little place. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I know exactly where. You need to go to Giordano's Pizza right there. Sorry, one second. Yep. The only thing about that Giordano's is that it takes so long to actually get a pie. Well, it's definitely a place you do one of two things. You go there with friends you just want to sit and chit chat with, or you order it to go. Because <laughs> then you don't have to sit there and wait. You could just pick it up when it's ready. Hey, John Robertson, how are you? Well, um, I'm good, but I'm at the poker room and a guy just passed out. I've been playing 22 years and that's never happened. Oh God, is he okay? Uh, he's up now. He's been on the floor, like passed out for like 10 minutes, but they just got him up. So I was, Jesus. it was a young kid, 23 year old kid. Just, oh, God. John, hey, you know something, John? You it's been a weird day. It's been a weird You've day. Had a, yeah, a near death thing with a motorcyclist this morning. And now this? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to report that the table decided to stop playing. We all decided we're not going to play anymore until it's taken care of. Good idea. I was like, the dealer kept dealing, and I was like, nah, I think we need to stop this. I, I don't feel, I feel slimy. We're not playing. And they all agreed. Yeah. So, yeah, weird day. I also had set under set on the plot, which yeah. is less of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, less of a big deal. Not not so worried about that. We might need to like sage you or something, John. We might need to get some Maybe. sage. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's not been good. It's all right. It's all right. I was just using you guys as a distraction. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you are. Same. Yeah. I had Simone want to follow me on the pizza on the Chinese delivery side do. And she's like, oh, I'll come in. It'll be quicker. I'm going, no, it's not. It's, yeah. I don't I, care I, if you I, open I, the door I, and you. Even my daughter, I keep her whipping. This is the loudest I've ever heard Merv speak in his life. <laughs> <laughs> you go running, getting yeah. stuff, come in. Wait a minute. Is noise. Simone in Vegas no, now? not on the same level. No. No. I go no. one, no. ten, one, okay. point. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm fast. Oh, I, I can't hear him. I walk fast. Yeah. They want to take their time. Get him out. Exactly. They just so the day that she's not off. I'm like, yeah. It's, it's my okay, buddy. Merv, I muted you because you've got so much background noise that we cannot hear you, my friend. So as soon as you maybe move away from whoever's chit chatting so loud behind you, please unmute yourself and and come chat with us. But it's so loud that the background of your of your microphone is louder than you are. Sorry, my friend. We'll give him a few minutes and 
see if that background noise calms down for him. Because I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't hear a word he was saying. No, I couldn't tell anything he was saying at all. Give him a minute to move away from wherever he's at. He's trying to get Jim food, and that is way more important than this on board space right now. So, Heck yeah, I hope Jim's doing great. I want to see Jim go deep. I guess Merv was telling us that he was down to 19,000, and now he's up to about a little bit over half a million. So, quite a comeback. That's fantastic. I'm following uh, him and, yeah. and Brian Winter. I'm following Brian Winter because I like him a lot. How's he doing? He was feeling really good. I think he said he was like seven or eight hundred thousand earlier, and he was enjoying it. it. Feels like he's playing well, so he's nice. he's rocking and rolling. Nice. How cool. He and Rachel are like two of my favorite people in poker. I just absolutely love, and Haley. I love her too. They're all so cool. They're very cool, hardworking folks too, and they do a great job. Love it. All right, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a bragging picture in the in the chat, but you can't make fun of the fact, folks, that I have no makeup on. I actually was trying to help with the photo shoot of my new grandbaby, and she was having a fit. Like we tried for three hours to get pictures. I think we have six pictures, but anyway, the photographer snapped this picture, and I just absolutely love it. But you know, no fun of, of my no makeup and no hair done. Okay. <laughs> There's little baby JC. I think I'm smitten. Uh, I'm headed back to the table that they just took him out. He's, he's doing fine, but oh, uh, good. good luck. Play him, so see ya. Go get him, buddy. Good luck, John. JC is so cute. I'm going to tell you what. My oldest son is out there with that. He calls her he calls her the terrorist. It's so funny. Because <laughs> she literally, um, she had colic so bad. that, And this day of this photo shoot, we honestly could not get her settled down to get pictures. So we were all like taking turns of picking her up and trying to just get her to calm down so that maybe we could set her back down and snap some pictures. And so the mere fact that I have a smile on my face in this picture is a miracle. And the fact that she's not screaming like a crazy person is also a miracle. <laughs> oh, Lord. People think when I said JC5, five, five, uh, I mean, JC1, five adults, zero, they thought I was kidding. No, she kicked our asses. She is adorable, though. Yeah, my friend, uh, she did a baptism for her daughter not too long ago. And I played the role of, like, I don't know, assistant photographer, just trying to get her to look towards the camera. Right. It's never easy. No. And I'm going to tell you, JC just was, I don't know, she just was not cooperating. Like, no matter what we tried to do, you know, she just wasn't happy that day. And uh, we were all miserable because we were like, come on, all we need is like 10 pictures. Like, just give us like, Three minutes of time, and this photographer can get the pictures. You know what I mean? And, oh, she was not fucking having it. <laughs> little diva. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or my son's favorite word, the little terrorist is awake. He's so funny when he, oh, he's so funny when he starts talking that shit. We just start laughing. And we're like, well, we got to laugh because we would all be crying if we weren't laughing. She's doing good now, though, thank God. I think they actually got like seven hours of sleep last night. So all the adults were happy this morning. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to go on the site and see if the WSOP has any updates for us. 
Let's see what they have. All right, at uh, 7.01 Vegas time, they posted that Stephen Song is the chip leader with 2.8 million. Leonard Mao has 2.1 million. Adrian Mateos has 2 million. Ben Wing has 1.7 million. David Miskowski has 1.6 million. I wonder if that's the guy from Best Bet. That may be the gentleman from Best Bet, who is a crusher down there. Sean Winter has 950000 Eric Nathan, 775000 Danny Tang, 700000 Jared Jaffe, 700000 David Bakes, Baker, 520000 Todd Brunson, 520000 David O.D.B. Baker, 400000 So... Some nice updates there. And um, uh, Cody Daniels has 329,000. Janelle Jacobson has 725,000. Paulina Lolinger has three, or Linger, I think that's how you say it, has 300,000. Jimmy Ambrosa has 200,000. And there is no rhyme or reason why I'm picking these names other than I'm just picking names. Uh, let's see. I'm still looking. Okay, this was at 6.46 Vegas time. And we had Josh Rittgard had 2.17, uh, 2.1 million. Jesse Linus has 2.1 million. Maria Ho had 1 million. Kristen Foxen, 980. Richard Dixon, 630. Robert Varcone, Falcone, maybe. 225,000. Uh, let's see. This was at 6.44 p.m. Alex Keating had 1.7 million. Matt Affleck had 1.3 million. Lonnie Lou, uh, Hugh had uh, 1.1 million. Of course, that's Lonnie Hardwood. Hardwood, right? Marie, let's see. Um, Joe McKeon had 700, I'm sorry, 570,000. Corey Aldemir had 370,000. Paulina Low. Oh, isn't Paulina, isn't that Poker Bunny? I think that's Poker Bunny, isn't it? Paulina Lolinger. I think that's Poker Bunny. 320,000. So still a lot of poker to be had, folks. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. When do they have another, let's see, it's 7 o'clock, 7.30, going on 7.30. Um, so that's the 7th. What do they have, another level and a half, Stephanie, to play? That sounds right. Yeah, I think so. I think they have another level and a half to play. They must be so tired, though. These days are so long. Yeah, day four, it's kicking their butts. And, you know, you have to think about those people that played 1D, Flight 1D. They didn't have a day off. So they, you know, for me, that would be one deterrent as to why I would never play 1D. Because uh, I would want that day off.
I'm just perusing uh, Twitter to see if anybody's posted anything. What is this? Wait a minute. I think Poker Mama busted a little while ago. Oh, bummer. Well, I am just reading an announcement by the WPT. We are deeply saddened by the passing of Kurt McPhail, who has been a part of our WPT family for 17 years. Kurt founded the WPT League in 2007, operated the WPT Sea Poker Room on the Virgin Voyages, and was the backbone of our recent WPT voyage, contributing immensely to its success and leaving an incredible mark on our community. Kurt's life was marked by his love for poker, but even more so by his profound love of, for people. To Kurt, everyone was a friend. Our thoughts are with his family and friends during this difficult time. Rest in peace, Kurt. Hi, Brandon. Oh, sorry. I didn't see your request, Brandon. I was just surfing through Twitter to see if there was any news from anybody. Hey, Brandon. You there, Brandon? Brandon, are you there? I don't know if Twitter's glitching. It shows that he's a speaker, but then it shows I have one request. It's crazy. Yeah, sometimes when that happens uh, on mine, I just send the invite and it fixes it. That's so stupid. Twitter, come on, get your shit together over here. I mean, in good news, uh, Nacho Barbero, who's an ACR pro, uh, is doing really well. And then uh, Nikki, Nikki Palma just posted that he tanked for seven minutes, uh, then made the right call, and he's up to 1.1 mil. Good for him. Brandon, can you hear me, dude? Brandon, are you there? I'm going to kick you down to listener and see if, oh, now it shows he's a listener. It's so goofy. Maybe he jumped off to come to leave and go back. Here comes trouble herself. Donna, are you there? Good morning. I just woke up. It's like. 20 past three morning. I'm just oh going to Hello. Go back to sleep before you get too wide awake and you can't. I'll be fine. We're just so shit. Request. I'll come see you. I'll see you for five minutes. All right. Brandon, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you guys now. When I, you know, this, this great fucking website they got. You come up sometimes, you just can't hear anybody. 
I saw I the mic. It's so frustrating little, sometimes. The, little mute, the mute thing come off and then back on for when you were speaking and then when Stephanie was speaking, but I couldn't hear anything. It's so crazy sometimes. It drives me nuts. I'm like, okay, I'll go back out, come back in, go back out, come back in. Yeah, I had to like, you know, like force close the app. Yeah. To, yeah. So, well, at least I can hear you now. That's good. Awesome. What are you doing today? Not much. Um, Mary just went to dinner for her brother's uh, birthday. So I'm just hanging out at her house. Well, that's fun. We talked and uh, she didn't want me to meet her her brother and her uh, sister-in-law before I met, like, I met her parents, but not officially, like, the boyfriend meeting, you know? Oh, she really is going formalities. Yeah, and they're in Vietnam until the 27th of July, so she wants me to meet her parents first before I go over there, so I get it. I, I don't disagree with her. So, hey, whatever you guys, you know, work out. That's between you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. So I'm just hanging out at her house, um, watching TV and talking to you guys, talking to three three beautiful women up here right now. Thank you, sweet talking little fucker. <laughs> Flattery will get you anything. What do you want, Brandon? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, you know, I I really like all three of you. You're all three very nice women. Good thing you're stuck with us, kid. That's good. I mean, I'd I could be stuck with much, 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 much worse. <laughs> uh, so when are you leaving for North Dakota, bud? Uh, I called the hall this morning. We were going to leave this morning, and those jobs were. Uh, somebody took those jobs yesterday, so now I'm trying to figure out what the hell to do. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Might might um might be Turbo's um not roommate, but you know, city mate here shortly. Kansas City is an option. Well, at least that's not so far and the weather won't be so drastic. Yeah, I I would prefer Kansas City, especially because um where I was gonna be working in North Dakota, I'd have to drive six and a half hours to an actual proper airport. We're in Kansas City. They have an airport there. So, I, you know, come back and see Mary, you know, every, you know, third weekend for, you know, once a month at least. Right, 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 right. And not have to drive six and a half hours to the damn airport. So when will you know about that job? I mean, I they have, uh, I don't know, 70 open jobs right now. I could just go take one tomorrow. But me and her, she, we decided that uh, we'll talk about it because I could go to Memphis Go to Albuquerque. There's a lot of options. So, oh, Memphis is the armpit of America. I don't recommend it. Yeah, I. It's probably not going to happen. It's probably looking towards Kansas City, but you know, we decided we'll talk about it. Then I'll leave over the weekend and be to wherever I want to go Monday. All righty. Or not over the weekend. I guess over the you know the next couple of days. Yeah, so you can have time to drive there. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know. Shit, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mute everybody. Sorry, Brandon. That's okay. But, you know, I try to explain to her, it's very important that, you know, if we're dating, you know, your opinion, even though I'm going to make the final decision of what, you know, what's going to happen. But, you know, I want to talk to her about it because, you know, it's pretty important. So... Yeah. And she doesn't really get what I do. Like, my ex-wife kind of got... It took her, like, three or four years to actually figure out, you know, like... You mean you work somewhere for two weeks and quit? Yeah. It happens. So it took her a while to get it. And so I'm trying to, like, slowly introduce her to this, what I do for a living. So, um... But, it, but it's very important to me that, that I get her opinion. Well, of yeah. course, but, you know, job is number one priority. Of, of course, of course. And, like, that's why I told her, like, um, I want your opinion. I want to, you know, see what you have to say about it. But if I have an, if, if I have an idea and I'm, I'm, uh, then I'm going to do it, that, I mean, that's, you know, I, I have, like, the final say. 
but I still think it's important to get her opinion on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when will you leave? Saturday? So you have enough time to get there and settled in? Yeah, probably Saturday morning, I would say, yeah. Yeah. The way I drive, because it's like a two-day drive to Kansas City, if that's where I'm going. Yeah. So go halfway Saturday, the rest of the way Sunday, and then uh, be to the hall Monday morning. Nice. But Yeah, Memphis... They have a lot of work at car plants right now. There's a lot, just a lot of work around the country. Like, you, like I was telling her, you know, I'm I'm blessed right now because in 2008 you couldn't find a fucking job for what I do. And right now you can put a map up on the wall and throw a dart, and wherever it lands, you probably could get a job somewhere around there. You know what I mean? Right. The thing about Memphis that makes it the armpit of the world for me, anyway, is. Um, it is a major shipping, like it has major shipping yards, train yards. And so you have, an, I've never seen so many uh, semi-trucks in my life on side streets and regular, you know, like city roads. Um, because they're all going to the train yards to pick up freight and the amount of semi-trucks in that city is mind-boggling. Um, and so, therefore, all the roads are just full of potholes. Like, I'm sure they just can't keep up with the road work just out of the, the sheer number of trucks that pass through that city. Uh, because, of course, you know, it's in middle America and you have the major in, um, interstates and and you have major you know, train yards. And so, I mean, I get why it's like it is, but yeah, that would be not my first place to want to go work. That's for sure. They have the same thing in Bulmer, like uh, at the port, you know, trucks in the heyday. I mean, that port has really, really slowed down in the last probably 15 years, but in the heyday, they'd have 100, 150 semis lined up outside the port. Um, to do like exactly what you're talking about, and, and that road that goes to the port, exactly what you're talking about, just potholes, just you know, because it's just eighty thousand pound trucks driving over the road, you know, right? It's going to create potholes. Just, it's a the first road. time I went to Memphis was probably 10, 12, maybe even fifteen years ago. I don't even know, and um, I was just like, I was like, now mind you, I'm from Chicago originally. I live outside of Atlanta now. We have traffic. I've lived my whole life in traffic, right? And so for me to notice that there's a different amount of trucks here than where I'm from, yeah, there must be a bazillion trucks, right? Because it was noticeable. It was crazy. I was like, I've never seen this many damn semi-trucks on side streets, you know, just like in the city streets. It was weird. Um, and I get it, uh, but... As far as going there to work, yeah, it would be my last priority. And another thing that um, I don't know if you know or anybody else, like uh, Memphis is the headquarters for FedEx. So that may have something to do oh, with Oh, like, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's their that's their headquarters. Makes sense. With the big train yard there, makes sense. Yeah, and even okay. flying into the airport and, you know, like I would say overseas shipments, you know, flying into Memphis because that's their headquarters and then putting yep. whatever on the truck and getting it where it goes. I yep. definitely have a lot to do with it and the trains. And yeah, I, yep. I totally get what you're saying. I, yeah, it's a very busy city. Yeah. And I highly recommend if your girl comes, if you ended up there and your girl comes into town, definitely stay at the, um, uh, what the hell is Ev Elvis's home? The name of his house. Oh, uh, great. Graceland. Yeah. The Graceland hotel though definitely stay at the grace it is such a great experience and of course visit graceland and the museums blah 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 but definitely stay at the graceland hotel it is amazing yeah i mean that's my plan like i'm gonna while i'm staying there i'm gonna find some cheap piece of shit place that's you know but if she were to fly in yeah i would not bring her to somewhere like that so that's a good recommendation i would probably you know, somewhere like that, that would be nice. Yeah, without a doubt. 
without a doubt. It's just fun because, you know, Elvis is, you know, part of music history, right? And so to be there and see his home and, and it's like a time capsule. When you walk in there, you know, I'm old enough to remember when he did interviews and stuff. And so when I went down to like the jungle room, which is like, was his den, uh, when I went down there, I was like, oh my God, I remember uh, it was either an interview or a TV show that featured, you know, him and he was down in this jungle room. I mean, I could just remember it as clear as day. It's so weird, um, but so fun as well. And it's like they have not touched it. It looks just the same in pictures, you know, 50 years ago as it does today. It is literally a time capsule and it's it's just kind of cool to go see. So go ahead, Donna. I'm going back to sleep, my darling. I just come up to say hello. Well, I love you, and I'm glad we were able to put you back to sleep, dear. All right, my darling. Speak to you soon. See you in a few hours, honey. Have, have a good week, Donna. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, Steph. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye, Bye Donna. Bye. See how good I am at just boring people back to sleep? Hey, that's why I get into spaces in the wee hours. I'm like, please let them be just calmly talking. No yelling and screaming so I could just listen and lull back to sleep. And then, of course, I get in there and everybody's screaming like crazy people. I try not to do that. But every once in a while, you know, you know. Trust me, I know. I know. This is this is my favorite thing about spaces conversations like this. Just talking about, you know, your experience in Memphis and, and just stuff, you know, doesn't have to be poker necessarily, but just like life stuff instead of screaming about, you know, because somebody's being a jerk off to somebody else. Like, just that's so stupid. It's like high school drama stuff. It just pisses me off. Well, and especially when people are making up stuff, like, <sighs> You got to be so desperate when you have to make up something about someone you don't even know. Like, what are we doing here? Exactly. Trying to create content, I guess, is the, the idea. Of which, yeah, I guess. I mean, what? how do you monetize space? If you, even if you get 100 listeners in the space, who cares? You're not monetized. Like, there's no monetization. So, Exactly. I don't, I really, it doesn't, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. But, hey, teach their own. Exactly. All right. I'm looking at the WP, uh, SOP site and at 715, uh, some chip count updates. Amy Bearer has 995,000. Gabby Lifshitz of Israel has 620,000. Luca Bunjovic has 475,000. Nils Pr uh, Prudel. Has three hundred and twenty thousand. Stephen and Enriquez maybe has not a hundred and ninety thousand. I'm scrolling, trying to see if there's any more. So Sherry, is this the combined day three? Like it's everybody now. This is day four. This is everybody, and I think they're to about um, eight hundred. I think Stephanie said 800 and some. So we're probably right. Let me see if they've updated the number. They have not updated the number on the site. So, or maybe it was Merv said we were at like, say 825 left. And that's been at least a half an hour ago. So I would just guess to say we we're probably right around 800 left. I do think we're on pace to hit you know, the 600, I think that's where we were last year. So 600 right. end of the And it says, let's see, Tom Dwan has 950,000. I just figured it was day three because I can't count to four. So, Well, get your toes out and use them as counters now. Yeah, I should have. But, you know, you know what would be crazy and what I'm really hoping for? That this is the year a woman takes down the main. That would be fucking, that would be great. Well, and I totally agree with you. But the problem is there's not enough left in the field. Like, it's going to take, 
like Lon, Lonnie has, Harwood has a, gr- a great chance at it because she is right around the million dollar mark, right? And um, who else did I say? Uh, was Natasha, Ho was still yeah, Natasha Mears here, I think had like 900 and some thousand. So right now, the chances of a female doing it are slim, is slim, just the sheer numbers. Like, there's probably one per, I don't know, 300 men, women. You know what I mean? Like, there's not many left. I'm guessing that's Jason Mercer's wife? It is. Yeah, okay. It is. I'm, I'm glad. I, I was going to make a joke, like. Oh, you mean Jason Mercer's wife? I don't, I don't know her name, but <laughs> me and Mary were having this conversation earlier about how pissed I get with sports things where it's like, you know, oh, this guy's wife did something in sports. It's like, you know, she has a fucking name. I just didn't know her name. I knew he was married to somebody that played poker. I just didn't know her name. Yeah, well, you know, I completely understand what you're saying, but Being a mom of three, I've always been Ed's mom, Nick's mom, or Natalie's mom. (laughs) So it's just something you get, you know, grow accustomed to when you become a parent. You're always somebody's mom. But it's like, um, if you know who Zach Ertz is, he used to be, he's a football player. He played for the Eagles for a long time, and now he plays for Arizona. His wife is, um, uh, she plays for the, the U.S. women's national team in soccer. Nice. So, like a couple years back, ESPN did a thing where, oh, Zach Ertz's wife um, scored a goal in the game, and he, like, he berated them, like, on a bunch of tweets, like, you know, she's not, she's not supposed to be, you know, she has a name. A definition. Her, her name is, her name is Julie. Her name is not Zach Ertz's wife. Like, her name is Julie. Right. And, and even in his bio, at least... The last time I checked on his Twitter bio, it says uh, Julie's husband. <laughs> I thought was was, thought Good was for fun. him. Yeah, Good for I just him. I, I just can't stand that when when a woman is married to like a professional athlete and they do something. Oh, this you know this guy's wife did something. Like, it's kind right. of fucking shame. I hate that shit. All right. Well, I hear you, and I appreciate that for sure. I do think going off of Brandon's point about, you know, he'd love to see a woman take it. You know, when we were in Vegas and we were chatting with with Berkey, right, we were discussing how do we grow women in poker? Because realistically, it's still like, what, 3% of the field typically is women. It's five now. You know, five. And, you know, we want to get to something substantial but we also want to get to something realistic so i think getting you know even 10 12 percent in the in the coming years i think would be a big big step for us honestly if we got to seven percent this wslpi would be fucking elated but that would be huge like we were talking about with berkey i mean you know what's going to get women more women into poker is like we were all three talking about men not berating women at the table and calling them you're a stupid bitch and I can't believe you played that hand and and then you know a guy plays the same hand against him and oh, okay you know nice hand but because it was a woman that played that hand against him and there's a lot of you know how many men I mean I don't have to tell you guys how many men do shit like that that would be to give more penalties for shit like that w- would be maybe a good step in in the right direction of getting more women into poker I think well, and I think you're making a valid point, but I'm also going to say that there are two things. There are a lot of men that treat us very nicely and well at a poker table. And the other side of that is there are a lot of bitches at the poker table that make women's lives miserable. I can name several female players that are absolutely the worst pieces of shit on earth to other women at the table. I agree. So is it just like, um, I don't mean to sound offensive, but like just women poker players being catty to each other? Is that what you're, is that what you mean? Wait, hold on a second, you guys. I 
I've just not seen that in my experience. I've seen so many men just berate women because they lost to a woman and they think their little fucking, their poor little ego is hurt, you know, because they lost to a woman. But when they lose to a man, it's totally different. They don't, they don't berate them or anything like that. That's all. And Steph, you know, we talk, you know, you know my opinion on this. Yeah, I do. I get it. But just what Sherry was saying, I don't, I, I've not experienced that. But, you know, I'm not a, I'm just a dusty rag one two cash game player. So most Sorry. of the time. It's... Sorry, you guys. Somebody came to my door. What did you say, Brandon? I'm so sorry. So just, I guess I, my question was, um, I've not experienced what you're talking about, but is this like women being catty to other women? Oh no, they all say the same thing. Like you just said, why would you ever play those cards? Um, I mean, the same things that you've heard men say with the exception of the misogynistic stuff, like why aren't you in the kitchen cooking, but the same, you know, berating of, Oh my God, I can't believe you called me with that. And, you know, you're so stupid. And, you know, there's this one lady who, if you don't really know her, everybody thinks she's amazing. But if you say her name to probably 80% of the females in poker, they're like, oh, that bitch. But, you know, because she treats people horribly at the poker table. And is it unfortunate? Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, but there are there are more men that do it than women, but you can't just let the women off the hook that do it either. So everybody's got to be held accountable for their actions. Well, I guess my question to you would be, is there women that will berate women for a hand, but not men? Yes. Oh, really? Okay. okay. That's what she's oh, saying. Oh, I've never experienced I've, I've, That's what I was just telling Steph while you were away. I've never experienced that. I've only yes. men just their poor little ego gets hurt because they lost a hand to a woman and they just berate them, but they lose a hand to a man and they just, okay, you know, that's poker, whatever, you know. I think it's just a double standard. I think, you know, women are hard on women <laughs> and that's the reality, right? Um, and men are hard on women and that's the reality. I, I kind of, don't even like to say that because it sounds like a cop out, but it is what we experience, you know. Well, but I'm not... we also have to give credit to where credit's due. There's a lot of awesome guys that you know are great to us in poker room. There are a lot of awesome female players that are great to us in poker rooms, but there is also, you know, the opposite of both of those things. So, uh, is it unfortunate? Yes. You know, every year we make strides and there's less and less of it, but there's still a lot of it. So still have work to do. And honestly, if they came out in next week with the numbers and said we're up to 7% of the field being w females, I would be absolutely ecstatic. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not a woman, so, you know, it's different for me, but I've just never experienced a a woman doing exactly what I said about men, you know, berating women when they lose the hand to them, but not berating men. Like, I believe you. I'm, I'm not saying you're lying. I just, that's just not something I've experienced. And that's, um, I don't really understand that. Because you think, you know, women would support other women in poker because you guys are the obvious minority. I mean, very clear minority. So you think, you know, women would stick together, but I, I don't, I don't know. I yeah. could give you the time frame to go look at a live feed table of all female players. And the person that I'm referring to is on that live feed table berating somebody that she calls a friend. about the card she's playing. And and that's, I, it's them, disgusting. First of all, like, I, you play any two cards. like yeah, Exactly. I, I don't understand berating, first of all, whether it's 
male, female, you know, you know, black, white, Asian, doesn't, like, it doesn't matter who you are. I just don't understand anybody berating anybody for any cards they play because it's their money. Well, I'm going to tell you. I don't get that. When I'm at the table, I put a stop to it. I'm like, uh, dealer, I didn't come here to listen to this. So either you stop it or get the floor over here, but we're not doing this today. That's so you, exactly what I say. You remember a couple months ago when I asked you, um, when I had the situation with the, the guy that was just continuing to break that, that, uh, lady at the table when I was playing yeah. and I called the floor and she talked to me privately and said, I wish you wouldn't have done that because now it makes me look like a, like I'm a like soft or something like that. And I felt bad, but I just couldn't listen to that guy. Like three hands later, he's still talking to her about how bad she plays her hand. And I'm like, well, come on floor. Well, I'm not going to fucking listen to this guy. Just continue. Exactly. To, and guess know. what? Do it anytime that happens. And if she is, um, doesn't like it, it's okay. Cause you know what? You're sitting at that table too, and you don't have to listen to it. So you calling him over is for your own sake as well. But she, she basically, I don't, just to summarize the conversation, like, I got to take my lumps because I'm a girl at the table. And I'm like, no, the fuck you don't. Like, exactly. You don't have to deal with this. You don't exactly. have to deal with this man fucking continue debrading you three hands later. You don't have to deal with this. Call the floor over. He gave him, he gave him a one ring penalty. And I, I said, that's not enough. And you need to reconsider. And he went and talked to the other floor man, or he talked to the dealer privately and took it up to a two-ring penalty. So I, I felt good about that. And that guy fucking hated me after that, obviously. But I'm just not going to sit there and listen to, to him. He loses a hand to a man. He's not going to He's not gonna say shit. And let me tell you, I've gonna, said that to to exact line. To, I have said that exact line at a table before. I've looked right at the, the guy and said, you know, if I was a man, you'd never be saying that to me. Because you would have the shit kicked out of you, dude. Yep. 90% true. I would say you're, you're definitely, you should say something, but don't maybe leave her out of it and just say, Hey, this guy's being a jackass. He won't shut the fuck up. And we have hands to play. Can you deal That's, with him and leave her? Out I of did it? not ask. So, okay. So the situation was she sucked out on him on a river, which it's fucking poker, man. If you not play poker long enough, you don't get sucked out on I me. Mean, it fucking happens. You need to suck out on people in order to win some exactly. of these tournaments. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah. So he just continues to berate her. Berate. I, I let it go for a while. And I asked, she was to my left. Like, uh, I was seat three, she was seat four. So I kind of leaned over to her and whispered, do, do you want me to call the floor? And she's like, no, after, after it happened. But three hands later, I'm like, and maybe I was out of line because she's told me don't call the floor, but I'm, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this guy just continue to talk like this. It's out of line, and it's it's offensive. So I called the Absolutely. floor, and I said, you know, I don't want to listen to this guy talk about a hand that was three hands ago. And I didn't mention her. I didn't mention who it was. I didn't want to call her out because I was. it was very clear to me that she didn't want the floor called over. And she kind of, like I said, she got mad at me and kind of talked to me. You know, we were right next to each other so we could talk, like, privately ish like not whisper to each but you know and she said i wish you would have done that because now that they're gonna think i'm soft or they're gonna think I, I can't take it and i you know i'm used to this i'm built for this i'm i'm you know i'm always the only woman at the table and i'm used to men just thinking i'm i'm soft or thinking i'm you know not a good player or whatever and i'm like well fuck now i feel like shit but i mean I'm just going to say to you, anytime you're doing the right thing, you should never be ashamed of that. It was just disgusting to listen to. Of course. And you should have put a stop to it. And I'm ecstatic you did. And, you know, hopefully 
uh, a day or two after that, the young lady thought about it and came to grips that it was the right thing to do. But I think that, you know, and maybe you guys can answer the question because, you know, I'm obviously not a female. I mean, just the fact that she, and I, this is something I never, never thought about, but I'm always the only female at the table and I'm just used to dealing with this. And I'm like, man, yeah, you're probably, you know, that's probably a good point. Like, that doesn't, know. yeah, but that doesn't mean she should have to deal with that. Absolutely and not. That's why you speaking up is exactly what you should have done. I I thought that was the right move until she said, "I wish you would have done that." Now they're gonna think I'm, you know, they're gonna think different of me, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck, all right." But well, how are they gonna think different of you if? Um, they're the ones that are not behaving themselves properly. Yes. Like I said, hopefully she thought about it and a few days later came to grips with that was the correct thing to be doing. Well, and there was another little comment that was um, from that guy after the floor man left that said, uh, what are you trying to fuck her? You had to call the floor. For... Dude, what is your... I wanted to beat you that guy. Like, what the fuck is your problem? No, I, I want more women in poker. Like it's, it's just disgusting to listen to some of these guys at, at a poker table. Yeah, and, and even even to to the point where, you know, let's say you know we're nine handed and there's w one woman at the table and eight men, and you know, we have we all have conversations at the poker table, but there'll be like guys, you know, like, oh yeah, that girl over there on that table, she's got a fat ass, doesn't she? Oh man, I would love, to, I would love to fuck her. Like, uh, do you, do you not see the lady in seat six? Like, you're gonna continue to talk about this at a poker table with a lady at the table? Like, the fuck are we doing here? Come on. Yipper. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. I'm a, I work in construction, so I've and I'm not innocent in this. I've talked, you know, talked like this before, but. I would never, ever, ever dance like that in front of a woman at a poker table. I mean, it's just, I don't, I mean, there's just so many fucking things we could fix, but, you know, nobody wants to, nobody wants to fix it. No, because then they would have to admit they're doing something wrong. Well, because, okay, this is going to sound bad, and I'm sorry, but if you're a poker room manager... Like you said, 7% of players are women. So why would you make rules for 7% of your customers that's going to piss 5%. off 93% of your customers? 5%. 5%. So why would you make rules for 5% of your customers that are going to piss off the other 95%? And I know that sounds like a piece of shit thing to say. I don't agree with it. But, I mean, I just think that's probably how, you know, how your, how the business mind works, you know? Yeah, but here's the thing. We don't want different rules. We just want everybody to go by the rules and treat us with respect. I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated just like everyone else, a good poker player. No, I'm not saying special treatment, but, I mean, if it's nine men at the table and they want to talk about how how good that girl looks over at that other table or whatever, I mean, that's, I mean, okay, I guess. But if there's a woman at the table, like that's not a, that's not a conversation that you should be having at the poker table at all. Well, and I don't disagree because I really don't want to listen to that nastiness. Um, but I also agree they have a right to talk about whatever they want. You know, and that's why it always cracks me up when people bring up Trump saying something about grabbing women by pussy their pussy or whatever he said in a private, you know, locker room conversation. It always cracks me up. People bring that up like it's some big major sin of the world. He said that. It was locker room talk. Anybody that thinks anything other than that is just an idiot. Well, you know I'm not a Trump supporter by any means, but I will say that I've said some some shit in front of, you know, three or four guys I work with that should not be repeated in public. That's right. 
you know, and and that's just the truth. I mean, men are pieces of shit. I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's locker room talk. I'm a female, and I'm telling nope. you, it's locker room talk. I was I offended I, by it? No. I don't have a problem with that. It was a private conversation that somebody was trying to make money off of. A reporter was trying to make his name known and make money. That's all. I got a problem with a lot of things he did. That's not one of them, though, because all, as much as you don't want to think about it, even though, like, you know, like, when I make friends with somebody and, and you know, their wife, you know, I talk with their wife, oh, I, you know, men are, I can't believe they talk like that. And I'm, like, thinking in the back of my head, like, you should, you should hear your man talk at work. Like, you, you would be disgusted at the shit he says at work, like. Exactly. But all men just men are men. I don't know what to tell you. Women do it too. And I am not I am and not anybody in- think anybody pretending like that's not the norm is just full of shit. <laughs> I totally agree. And I am again, I am not innocent in this <laughs> at all. I've said some shit that if it got repeated in public I'd be fucking canceled too. So you know but if there's a woman at the table, I'm not going to say shit like that. I mean, that's just out of line to me. Well, and, you know, it's about respect, right? That that, uh, we all know that's a locker room conversation. Keep it in the locker room. It's not the poker table. And I'm even okay with, with if all nine seats are men and the dealer's a man. And we're keeping it at the table. You know, if you want to have a conversation like that, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to call the floor or anything. But right. the dealers, if the dealer's a woman or there's women players at the table, that's not conversations you have around women. It's just not acceptable to me. And it happens all the fucking time. It's just, it's wild to me that just, I don't know. Men are wild. I, I don't, I don't get it. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I also have to say that not all women behave themselves at the poker table either. Um, so we can't let them off the hook either. Well, okay. I'll give you an example of that. And this, I'm just going to sound bad. I was playing in, when I was playing in Bakersfield, um, it was about a two, five game. That's when I was making a little bit more money. So I had a little bit more money to to dust off. And this the, the lady that was at the table was um, a regular and pretty fucking good. And she just got in a tough situation where I think she got squeezed. I think she had, I never showed her hand, but I think she had kings and got squeezed because I think he made top two on the flop. I don't know that. I'm just guessing. And she said something so fucking out of line. Said, you know, he put in, I think, it was probably two hundred dollars in the pot, and he made it three fifty. And she said, "If I go outside and show you my tits, will you show me your cards?" And I was like, "What the? Fuck? Totally unacceptable. That is so out of line. Yeah, totally that is not acceptable at all to me. That's right? I didn't. I didn't call the floor because." I mean, she was obviously, she was on her, since I was probably playing two hours and she's on her fourth or fifth margarita, so drunk, obviously. But I was just like, man, if a man said something like that, I mean, they'd be canceled. I mean, not canceled, but I would be more upset. And maybe that's, maybe that's wrong of me, that I would be more upset at a man saying something like that. Hey, go outside and do that. And then I'll show you my hand. Than a woman saying it, but no, sexual harassment has no I, place at a poker table. I still think that was way out of line, and she probably should have got a warning penalty for that. But nobody called the floor, so. Well, and the just, dealer should have been on top of that, right? I think the dealer should have called the floor, yeah. but it was a man, and he was like, "Oh man, you know, you know how men are. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, sounds exciting, you know." And I'm just like. What the fuck are we doing here? That's just that's not something you stay at a fucking poker table. I don't know. I, I totally that 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 pissed me off a lot. Totally agree, and that's my point exactly. 
yeah, the men are the are the biggest culprits as far as treating women badly at a poker table, but there are women that do it too. And my point is that nobody should do it. And we should always be treating everybody kindly at the poker table. I Yeah, I do. I know that, but not, not everybody does. And it would be such a, f- how much more fun would the game be if you could just sit at a poker table and be treated with respect by everybody at the table, whether male, like I said, male, female, white, black, Asian, who gives a fuck about anything like that? You know, just be treated with as a human being with respect. But I don't know. We're, we're I think we're pretty far away away from that. I don't think we are. I think we've come a long way uh, in my lifetime. Um, but there's always work to be done. Uh, just an update. Uh, they are officially on dinner break. Let's go. So who's still in from space? Cody's still in? Cody's in. Nikki P is in. Ari Engel is in. Um, Chirp Monster. Chirp still Chirp in? Chirp Monster is in. I don't know if Angela Jordanson is still in. Is Roger still in? Roger went out yesterday, unfortunately. Oh, fuck. I haven't been keeping track. I've been kind of, you know, doing other stuff, touching grass. Good for you. Know. you. Spending time with my lady, so. But I know Chirp, um, I was in a space last night or night before where he, he had 26000 at dinner break and spun it up to, he bagged like 355000 Yeah. So that's- and then he was over 600000 a day. Um, but the last we heard, wasn't he like in the 300000s or something, Steph? Uh, at the space that Avi had, uh, I'm trying to remember how many hours ago that was, like, I don't know, a long time ago, uh, he was at 875, but then I know he had, like, a bad beat, and he went down, um, I don't remember what the number was. Yeah, for some reason I have 300 and something, but I could be completely wrong. Uh, um, I think Verb would have an update, I can tag him, see if he can come in. He's um, probably still working on getting Jim's dinner, but if you want to, please do. Yes, ma'am. And I don't know his real name, so, I mean, I would try to look him up on the chip updates, but I don't I don't think it's going to be Chirp Space Monster. Pretty sure that's going to be his name on, on the WSOP website. <laughs> You're so funny. I wish, you know... There's, I mean, you could just register with whatever name you want because, I mean, how many how many people have you seen, like, when you look at the chip updates, like, did not report, did not report, or it's just, like, Bob or whatever. Yeah, but so, those are coming off of um, the player card. So those, like, when you buy in, they're taking your, your legal name. Oh, okay. So yeah, how do they get away with did not report? Uh, because they didn't do their own bag. So that's going to be, so they have a bag with no name. So they have to figure out who that is. Oh, okay. I wish you would have wrote Chirp Space Monster on there. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then a fart emoji right after that. <laughs> it would be funny, wouldn't it? Oh, God. I, I, I really like Chirp. I think he's a fucking great guy. He is a good guy, for really sure. Like Even though I know a lot of people don't like when he comes up as speaker and just does the, all the fart sounds but i think it's funny well we sent him off you must not have been in our space earlier i said uh, when he was leaving to go uh, start his day i said let's send him off with the fart noises if you're on the panel so we were pushing the everybody was pushing the fart button <laughs> well, it was pretty funny yeah so who was, oh, old mcdonald's running space the other night and when when Chirp was leaving, I'm like, let me let me send you for this on the road, and I gave him two fart emojis. And Old McDonald's <laughs> like, what the what what the fuck's that supposed to mean? Like, you got a problem with him? I'm like, no no no, bro. Like that's his thing. Like that's what he does. And he's like, oh, I, I thought you were like, you know, giving him like a hard time for something. I'm that's like, no, funny. 
No, it's not like that. I liked her, you know. It was that was kind of funny, but he hasn't been in spaces for. He just appeared again. I mean, I I heard a lot about him when I first came in, and so I guess he was in before I was, and then just came back. So I guess maybe Chirp came in after him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But he thought like I was like disparaging him or something with the fart emoji. I'm like, no, bro. That's like his signature. As soon as he comes up as speaker, he will not say one word until he drops the fart emoji or fart town from the soundboard. I'm telling you. <laughs> right on. How's everything going with the baby, Sherry? Everything still good? Yeah, much better. Thank you. Um, good to hear. Yeah, much, much better. I think we've we've gotten over the hump with the stomach issues. So that's awesome. That's yeah. She's good. doing good. She's growing. She goes to the doctor next week. Honestly, I think she's probably. I personally think she has grown at least four inches longer, at least. And mom and daddy are good too. Yeah, they're doing way better. Good. It's a it's a, a miracle what you know, it's amazing what a little sleep will do for you. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. I don't have, I don't have kids and never had a kid, but I have friends that have had that and yeah, it, you know, one of my friends like the first time like for the first four months I don't think he got eight hours of sleep. And he texted me the first time he did and he's like, Bro, I just got eight hours of sleep and I feel like a new fucking human being. And I get that. I totally get that. Yeah. It was rough the first the first month. We were all like walking zombies. I mean, honestly, we were like walking zombies that first month. And, you know, we were all just taking turns trying to fucking, you know, make it work. And, you know, like I would post JC1, five adults, zero. Like she was kicking our asses. <laughs> But they're they're so lucky that you were able to go out there and help them out. I mean, they're blessed. Well, thank you. Um, it was um, like I was telling a good friend of mine today. It honestly was a good thing because they were so in over their heads, like with their expectations of what it was going to be like. And part of it is is they're both older. You know, he's older, she's older. And they have their, their life is set up. You know what I mean? They have their routine and, you know, he loves to cook. So he puts dinner out at five and they sit down at 501 and they're eating dinner. And, you know, now at 501, JC screaming her head off and he still puts out his wife's food, which is now getting cold. You know, you're like, why are you putting her food out? It's going to be at least an hour before she can eat. And I'm sure she would appreciate hot food. You know what I mean? So it's like them just um, learning that they're, it's no longer their schedule. It's JC's schedule. And then they have a life. <laughs> so I think that was probably the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle. Because like, especially my son-in-law, just because he's, was in the army. So he's very regimented, schedule oriented, you know, we're doing this structure, blah, blah, blah. And I would just laugh. And I would say, you know, it's JC's schedule. Remember that conversation? And he would just stop and look at me and he put his head down and he would just readjust, right? Because he just thought that, you know, every day he works out at 10 a.m. on his day off. Well, guess what? If mommy's been up since 1 a.m. and now um, JC is up, but she is done nursing, so mommy could go take a nap. Guess whose turn it is to take care of JC? Yeah, you ain't going to the fucking gym. You're staying home and taking care of the kid. Yeah, of That's course. right. That's right. Because That's right. we're trying to train you, so when I leave, you know what you know what to do. What to, you know what what's going on. And so uh, five o'clock dinner. How old are they? Five o'clock dinner. That's like for people. Know, that are, you have to understand. Well, this is this is another huge adjustment. My daughter is a sleeper. So literally 
my my daughter will go to sleep at six o'clock and sleep until nine o'clock in the morning. Or, well, part of it is they do wor- uh, pool workouts and she has to be at the pool by 530 in the morning, a lot of mornings. So she has to get up at four, 430, whatever time she gets up to get to the pool workouts. So yeah, she's ready to go to sleep by six. Yeah, five o'clock dinner is just for like the, that's why they do that early bird special at restaurants for the old people. Right. Five o'clock right. dinner. But and I, so I that, totally get that if you got to be up at 5.30. Like, yeah, there was she had to running. be there at 5.30. So I don't know what, you know, oh. if she gets up at 5, well, she probably has a 20-minute ride. So she's probably getting up at 4.30, quarter to 5 to get even there with, Even without a kid, just to get ready, you know, to get everything yeah, done yeah. in the morning. At like 4.30 probably. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, she's going to bed at six. I mean, um, and so that was a big adjustment too, right? Is they're normally going to bed at six and, you know, JC's just getting wound up at six. Yeah, she ain't <laughs> so, going to bed at six. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> even this poor dog, poor Peachy, literally, I think it was maybe the second week after the baby came home. Poor Peachy, which is their dog. She weighs probably 15, 16 pounds. The little dog. <laughs> she Poor Peachy was so exhausted that we got a picture of her falling asleep with her head in her, in her food bowl. <laughs> Literally, sli- like she went to eat and she fell asleep while she was eating. That's how exhausted the dog was. <laughs> well, the, and the probably... You know, I don't know what kind of dog it is, but most dogs, you know, when a baby comes in the house, like, you know, they they feel protective. They feel oh, let like me tell you, protect, let me you know? tell you something. I want to say like the second or third night. I'm going to try to find this picture of Peachy. Um, the second or third night, Robbie had went up because I told them, you guys have to. One of you have to go to sleep. You know when the other one's taking care of the baby or if the baby's down here sleeping with or whatever, the one that's not working with the baby needs to sleep when they can't, you know what I mean? And alternate. And so Robbie went up to sleep and JC, we just couldn't make her happy. Like she was screaming her head off and Peachy ran up the stairs Now, she had just come in from outside, so she didn't need to go to the bathroom. She ran up the stairs and woke up Robbie. And Robbie came flying down because he thought Peachy needed to go outside. And we're like, what are you doing up? And he's like, Peachy needs to go outside. I'm like, no, she just came in. I said, she came up to wake you up because she doesn't like the baby crying. She wants you to come help the baby. I mean, it was just... And it was insane. That's exactly how most dogs are. You know, there's so the of, of of little kids. I mean, yeah, she she time. would sit. She sits like when the baby starts to cry, she comes right away and sits right at the feet of whoever is working with the baby. As soon as that baby starts to cry, Peachy comes running over and sits down and watches. What the hell's going on with this baby? I mean, I saw a video on Twitter. It was probably last week where. Um, a dog was attacking the, I don't know, just kid was probably five or six. Um, another dog, and this the the dog that that belonged to that family, came up and just fucking, almost just grabbed the dog by the neck that was attacking that little girl, and just that's what dogs do. I mean, they just, I don't know if it's it's I guess it's got to be in their nature just to protect you know like, yep. you know oh this is like yep. my. Puppy. You know, this is my puppy. This is my, you know, little kid. So they just get it. Yeah. And in the middle of the night, like my daughter will be in the nursery. Like when she was nursing, she would be on the, she bought like a rocker recliner. And so she would be in the rocker nursing and Peachy would, we had to put a chair because Peachy would be hot, like whining at her feet to come up there. So we had to put a chair next to the rocker so Peachy could jump up on the chair and then walk over the arm of the uh, recliner so she can climb in my daughter's lap and sit there while she was nap- uh, nursing. It, it, I mean, it's crazy. 
Yeah, to make sure the little baby was okay. Yeah, she was like, okay, there in the jumbotron is a picture of Peachy with her sleeping with her nose in her food her food bowl. Oh, what a cute baby. It was so funny. We were dying. Oh. We're like, look, Peachy is exhausted because she's used to going to bed at 6 a, uh, p.m. too, right? We're like, poor yeah, Peachy. She's got to be up in the middle of the night when the baby starts crying. Like, she's got to be there for the baby. It was so funny, dude. That's what, that's what dogs, that's what they feel like. They, I got to be there for that baby, you know? I yeah, absolutely. Like, we were dying, dude. We we're like, yeah. oh my God, the dog fell asleep. And and their so, nose in the bowl. So adorable. So adorable. God, we were, it was so, Peachy's done great. Like, she really is on guard duty. Like, it's incredible what she does. <laughs> she does not like when JC starts to cry. She fucking wants somebody to make her stop. Like, she really yeah. is like feeling it in her heart. It's crazy. And most dogs are like that. I mean, you know, yeah. like, They'll, I'm sure she goes to, you know, even if they're both asleep and she hears her start crying, like, uh, either on the baby monitor or just, you know, from the bedroom, I'm sure she goes and wakes him up, you know, like, Hey, right. somebody, somebody fucking take care of this kid. Hello. Sure. Hello. You know, I mean, that's just, that's, and most dogs are like that. And it's so just, it's so adorable to me. She is, she's a good dog. We rescued her. She was actually my dog. And um, when Natalie moved out there by herself, I said, you know, I don't like you coming home to an empty house, you know. What about if you take Peachy? She's like, yes, please. And I said, okay. So they're inseparable. Oh, that's sweet. That's that's really nice of you because, I, you know, I'm sure it took a lot for you to to be able to part with the I yeah, miss her so much. I know. Oh. Dog, dogs are like, I just, you know, I don't know if you've heard in the last week, I had to, well. I did know. My we talked about put, it when put, you were in Vegas. When our when put our dog down. So, um, I don't know if I was more upset when we first split that, you know, we split or that she kept the dog, you know. I'm sure it was all of the above. It was 50. Yeah. Well, it was more probably we split, but I, you know, you missed it when you don't have kids like I do, or I don't, um, you know, when you have a dog, it becomes like, it becomes like a kid. Really? Everybody's you know? close to their animals for sure. Unless you're just a heartless piece of shit. And then, right. you know, but you're not, I know you're not. And most people in spaces aren't. So yeah, it, you right know, on. This becomes part of your family, really. Right on. So yeah. I, I don't know what it took for you to to say, why don't you take Peachy? Like, it it was not easy, but... No, I know. I, it would take uh, a lot for me. You know, I knew she was in good hands, and I knew my daughter needed to come home to something because she was moving to a new city by herself. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, it was all good. All good. It's worked out. You know, Peachy has more frequent flyer miles than I do because she would come back and forth on the plane to come visit me and when I go out there. And so, yeah, life is good. I'm going to read what uh, Bathwater for Buy-Ins posted um, Todd Whittle's uh, tweet. Um, you know, Todd has been known to hang out in the spaces. And Todd wrote, going any better? Question mark. Not really. I have 781K, but we are now in the 25K minimum cashing zone. What does this matter? I embarrassingly shot off 14.5 thousand in buy-ins prior to this event. So this puts me back in the black for the 2024 WSOP. So good for him. Good for him. He's going to make his money back. Oh, and he just doxed uh, Chirp in the comments. Who did? Bath order for buy-ins. I don't see it. What are you talking about? Oh. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to. I mean, if he doesn't want to say, I don't want to know. So I mean, I just don't. I don't know. That's fucked up to me. Like, don't. Okay, how do you know that that's his name? Just because we were talking about it about seven minutes ago when the tweet was, and when he tagged me and circled that person, that name, I just, I'm guessing. I don't know that for sure, but wouldn't you assume that? Uh, uh, I don't even know what to say. That's just not something I would do. I mean, it's very obvious that that that's to him and I don't. I, know. Just I, in my in my opinion, that's not something I would do. But hey, who am I? Hey, homies. Um, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with family, but I'll be back later. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Bye. We finally got rid of Stephanie. Thank God. <laughs> You're so bad. Whatever, Brandon Nagy. Just kidding, Steph. Love you. Be safe. Have Bye. fun with the family. I will. Bye, Steph. Bye. Don't listen to him. <laughs> oh, Brandon. Me and Steph are close, actually. Really I know. Close. But I know. Like her and my her and my girlfriend texted back and forth now at this point. They've exchanged numbers, so nice. Uh, and we met in Vegas. She's she's a sweetheart. Like Very nice first, young I, lady. I showed up to to this was a couple of days before you came in. She said she was at the where in the hell was she? Cosmo? No, a Resort World. So I showed up and I missed dinner because you know I don't know if you heard the story. I got pulled over, shit went on. So I was a little bit later than I thought it would be. So I missed dinner, all the the dinner that all of them went to. So I show up and she just hands me this box. Here's she slices the pizza I bought for you. Oh, I just, I mean, never, never met her in real life, in my life, you know, and just, that's, she's just so sweet. She really is. Very so nice. anytime I mess with her like that, I'm just trolling. I know you are. I know you are. Same thing with Sean and, you know, fats. I like fats too, but I, you know, it's yeah. just fun to mess with them. It's, I just like messing with people, you know, it's fun. Even you, you know, I like messing with you too. <laughs> but, you know, anything I say to you is, is a joke. Like, I I really enjoyed meeting you. Like, I really enjoyed talking to you. I mean, I think you're a very sweet person and just wow. very, very good for Twitter spaces, I think. Well, I appreciate those kind words. And, you know, I just try to be me and keep yeah. it real. Yeah, of course. Same thing with me, you know. But, yeah, it was definitely good to meet her. I saw Soheb again. I met him before here in California. Um, you, uh, I met Brian just randomly. Um, me, uh, oh, me and Bobby went over to see what Soheb was doing in the 10K PLO when Bobby was on break. And right. we run into Brian. Oh, I'm glad so, you did. Yeah, it was it was nice to meet him. He's he's a very nice guy. Yeah, he's of course. Nice. So I, that was random. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't DM him or anything. Like, hey, should we meet up or whatever? But just randomly, we were, you know, in the same room. So that was cool. Who else? Joe Marengo. Awesome. Nice guy. Um, that might have been it. Maybe next time I'll see Wolfie. I don't know. Wolfie's Wolfie's hard to get a hold of. Wolfie even sang to me in person. I was so excited. Huh, hey, Wolfie. yeah, I was. Uh, I couldn't leave you up here alone with Brandon. You know, I had to come up as soon as I could. Thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> but uh, what are you saying? I was hard to get a hold of. Are you in town, Brandon? No, I was last week. Oh, you... I met a bunch of people, but I, you know, it's my fault. I didn't. I was going to send you a DM and. Yeah, it was I, your fault. You have my number, too. Yeah, that's true. I didn't have time. I was... Jesus Christ. It's kind of loud. Sorry. You're fucking wait. degenerate. Yeah, my... Wait, my bad. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bro. I'm just kidding, bro. No, no, I know. Yeah, it is loud. Oh, my God. For, for sure, next time, dude, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta look you up, dude. No, I just lost Kings to Ace Deuce because Flop tripped. Oh, Ace fun. Deuce. That's fun. Sick. Yeah, I met Joe. I met... Um, 
Sherry, Brian, uh, still have again, Steph. It was a good trip, man. It was, it was fun. But next time, yeah, next time, I got to meet the Wolf of Zor, for sure. Love that. Love that. Wolfie, what have you been up to? Sherry was so Sherry was so drunk when I met her, I almost had to carry her out of the casino. But oh, my she was, land. She, 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 was, she was able to walk herself out, fortunately. I think uh, you have me mixed up with Merv. No, I didn't meet Merv either because I left before he got there, unfortunately. Oh, no, that was Avi that was helping Merv. Never mind. I, I mixed you up with uh, Avi. No personal questions. I'm sorry. I mixed you up with Avi. <laughs> I mean, we're basically right. the same. He's like six foot one seventy. I'm five seven two forty, but basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I've been up to nothing though. You know, I played uh, the six hundred dollar ultra stack last week. I might uh, play the seven 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 on Saturday or Sunday, depending on some stuff. But uh, you know, that's like the last one. That's like the last. Bracelet event that's like under a thousand too. So you know, have you, run in, play. have you run into Turbo yet? Uh, no, not yet. I've been busy with work. Yeah, see, see, Sherry, I, I didn't lie. He's so busy. So but you didn't hit me up though. I mean, he, like, last week was a different story, possibly. But he yeah. met. Um, he Were you on the weekend or the week? I was there um, Sunday to Saturday. Oh, gee, yeah, I mean, yeah, there would have there been time. Because I, I didn't meet you last time, so. I know. I was supposed to go over to to, um, to South Point when you and Joe and Bobby were there. Oh, I met Bobby, too. That's right. right. I brought him for a coffee when he was playing in, uh, I don't know, one of them tournament. I don't remember which one. I sweated him for a little bit. But, um, yeah, I was supposed to come down to South Point, and then my girl was like, I'm tired. I don't, I don't want to drive all the way down there. It's fucking eight miles, but okay, you know, can't get mad. You're my, you're my DD, so I can't get mad at you, you know. But next time for sure. Next time I'm there, I'll hit you up. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear it. They're, you're not coming back for me. Baby, come back. Ooh. Do you play any tournaments or any any stories, any slots, any hits, any blackjack runs? I hit um, four aces on video poker with a kicker. So it's how much are you betting? Dollar twenty five. Uh, just twenty five cents. So twenty five max bet. Dollar twenty five. Yeah, gotcha. Quarter uh, denom. Five. Yeah, five hundred bucks. Nice. Hey, five hundred. That's it. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's uh, oh. two thousand credit. Two thousand credits. I was playing double double. If I was playing double, but it's only um, with four aces is only a thousand. So. Glad I was playing double double, because you know it's four aces with two, three, or four, is two thousand credits. So that was my biggest hit while I was there. I had a, uh, quite a few four of a kinds. I, I did pretty good at video poker, actually. I hit I hit four kings um two times in three hands. That was kind of wild. That was that's never happened to me before in my life. Wow. And four of a kind, two times three hands is rare enough, but to be four kings, two times three hands, I mean, the chance got to be like one in a, I don't know, five million or some shit. I don't know. You're a true king. I am. I am. Snoop would be. Oh my God, Wolfie, what are you saying right now? He's not wrong. <laughs> Listen, to him. Listen to him. Good God. Isn't Brandon's head swollen enough without you? Telling him he's a king now. I'm. I no. You know what? I'm not making this joke. Never mind. Good idea. Brent, is I, your last name really Nagy? Do we have proof of this? Or yes, sir. Cool? No, yes, sir. It is. I sent Clayton Bigsby my um my union dues receipt with my full name. Wait, is your Bigsby. real name Wolfie Zoid? Yeah. Okay. Is that your first name or your last name? First, last, <laughs> just your whole name. You went to you went to the to the court and changed. I my name is whatever, but I want to be known as Wolfazor. Just one name. 
people do that. It's normal. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not uncommon. But, yeah, I want to go hit up your daddy's bar next time. Hopefully. Well, that, that ship sailed. You, you know, if you really wanted to, you would hit me up one of the last oh, two I'm, times. I missed that. Maybe. Depends when you come back, you know. We'll see, you know, are you, maybe are you gonna come back for uh, maybe the WPT meetup, and then maybe we do an epic uh, home game again or private game at Ari again. I might uh, be back in December for the WP they, that WPT. Yeah, no, I'll probably, that's, I'll probably be in December. That's pretty far though. I mean, maybe if you come in between that, maybe. Maybe. It's like like I'm like I'm dating Wolf Azor. Maybe we'll see. We'll see if you if you behave yourself. We'll see. If he behaves himself, what is this? The dating game here? What are we talking about? That's what I'm saying. See, it's like maybe if you come back between now and December, maybe, maybe. Ay ay ay. December. Oh. There's so much going on between now and then. It's crazy. I'll be gone to November. They should make a song about that. Nobody got that joke. All right. That was a good one. And it landed. It should have landed, but nobody got it. Cool. <laughs> I'm still trying to process it. I think I'm tired. It's a rap song. Oh, yeah. I don't know that one. I'm sorry. Not, not Wu-Tang. Um, the guy that was in Wu-Tang. Why Club John? I don't know that song. Be gone to November. I'll be gone to November. Anyway, moving on. Moving on up. To the east side? Hell yeah, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. In the sky? Yeah, of course, that, that sitcom is right around your, your era, Sharon. That makes sense. Uh, what are you trying to say? I'm old? I resemble that remark. You do that was my, I'm going to tell you something. Resemble that, remark. <laughs> that was one of my most favorite shows. I love that show. J.J. Walker, I used to be able to impersonate him. Love it. I like Three's Company. It's oh, yeah, another great show. Old yeah. yeah, I love it. And, and different shows. Those Hell are my yeah. favorite old shows. Hell, yeah. All great shows. What are you talking about, Wills? What are you talking about, Wills? Love it. Love yeah, I it. Yeah, those shows on like, um, was it Nick at Night or whatever? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously they weren't, you know, because I'm young, Jerry. So, in your own mind, you are anyway. Yeah. Well, my knees tell me different, but, um, yeah, those shows weren't on TV when I was growing up. But, so me and my, <laughs> me and Mary were talking about Captain Planet today. If anybody is around my age, there was like a cartoon that was on TV. Like we're third, we're both thirty eight, so right around, I don't know, what was that? I was eight, so like early nineties. Right. I said Captain Planet. She looked at me like, "Oh my god, I totally forgot about it. I love that show." <laughs> oh. But you're you're too old, and I think Wolfie's too young. So, what the fuck? You want to get booted or what? Yeah, wouldn't be the first time, and it probably won't be the last time either. I know that's right. I'm Keep it messing. up, kid. I'm just messing with you, kid. I like yeah, exactly. Keep kid. it up, kid. Sherry, you don't look a day over thirty-eight though, so you got that well, going. Flattery's gonna get you nowhere. Um, all right, you're tried. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> I fucking tried, okay? Good try. Good try. And I think Wolf is like 30, right? Somewhere around there. Maybe even yeah. 20. Yeah. Young. 20. 20. You're not 20, motherfucker. I know that. 21. Yeah, bullshit. You're at least 20 or 29. I'm like I'm like Snoop's theoretical age. You're older uh, than me? No way. No, theoretical age. I don't know what that is. 
That's what he lied when Snoop lied about his age on Twitter. Oh, Spaces. Thirty five, thirty six. No. Twenty nine. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Me. Say less. Allegedly. No personal questions. You know, I'm, I got, I'm on my computer. I'm like, I gotta turn this off and switch my phone. So I'll be, I'll be back. I gotta close this though. He'll be All back. Right. Is, is that a threat? Well, I might be ending this space before you get back, Wolfie, because okay. right. I'm going to try to yeah. go to sleep myself. So, Brandon or Wolfie, you may want to start a space, guys. Wolfie, Brandon, yeah. as well. No. God damn it. No. Good night, guys. <laughs> Good night, you guys. Thanks wow. for listening, people. If anybody hears any updates from the main event, just DM them to me because I do, I do want to know how, like, Chirp's doing and anybody else so feel free to dm me and i'll get those dms eventually good chat with you brandon thanks for joining us john yeah, as, as always and hayden thanks for joining us and to the other listeners hope you're having a great evening as well good night everybody good night jerry <laughs>